powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Kent Lutzen. One man is in the ICU after a shooting in Superior earlier this morning. The Mineral County Sheriff's Office responded to reports that a man had been shot. The victim was transported to the local hospital, but then later transferred to another hospital for surgery. The Sheriff's Office, along with the Montana Department of Justice, is in the initial stages of the investigation. However, no suspect is in custody. Officials say they can ensure the community's safety is a priority. To read the full press release, go to kpax.com. Switching gears to weather, snow is headed toward western Montana and a winter weather advisory is in the forecast. Let's go to our meteorologist Russ Thomas for more on this. Russ? Yeah, that's right. Some of the snow has already started coming down pretty light across much of western Montana. Uh, nothing sticking right now, but I think as we progress in the overnight hours and certainly into early Sunday, that opportunity is going to be there for some light accumulations in the mountains, even moderate yeah, accumulations. You can see right here where that advisory is. It starts at 11 p.m., goes all the way through 5 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Valleys about 1 to 3 inches of snowfall. Missoula, Bitterroot Valley in particular. Uh, mountains 2 to 7 inches along the interstate. Uh, interstate 90 as well. You're going to see opportunities for snow. Again, slippery roads potentially tonight and tomorrow morning. We'll have more coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Russ. After a marathon session lasting into Saturday morning, Senate Republicans muster the votes to pass a $1.4 trillion tax overhaul. Democrats tried to delay the vote until Monday and give members a chance to read the nearly 500-page bill. Mola Langley has more from Capitol Hill. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, as amended, is passed. The biggest tax bill in 31 years cleared the Senate with only one Republican no vote, Tennessee deficit hawk Bob Corker. They know I've got fiscal concerns and, um, you know, I'm probably a dinosaur in that regard. Last minute concessions were made to satisfy a few wavering Republicans, adding in a deduction for individual property taxes capped at $10,000 and reviving the alternative minimum tax. I'm totally convinced this is a revenue neutral bill, actually a revenue producer bill that's going to get America moving again. Not a single Democrat voted for the plan. They claim most lawmakers didn't even read the final version, which contained cross outs and scribbled notes in the margins. Nobody knows what's in here, 479 pages. How can you declare which way you're going to vote on a bill that you haven't read? Democrats tried and failed to delay the vote until Monday. The motion is not agreed to. The bill's passage gets Congress one step closer to handing President Trump his first legislative victory. The bill contains the president's essential corporate tax break, which Democrats say will cost the GOP at the ballot box. My Republican friends will ultimately pay consequences for this bill in 2018 and beyond. Republicans insist their tax cuts will fuel the economy and help Americans of all income levels. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, Capitol Hill. In Montana, Senators John Tester and Steve Daines took to social media to, to share their thoughts on the tax reform. Just four days ago, Republican Senator Steve Daines said he was not going to vote yes on the bill unless he saw some major changes for Main Street businesses. Daines said he needed to see revises to the tax cut that would ensure Main Street businesses are not put at a disadvantage against large corporations. Just a, a day later, Daines said he was able to secure more than $60 billion in tax cuts for Main Street businesses, pushing his vote from a no to a a yes. After the Senate passed the bill this morning, Dane said, quote, we are one step closer to a once in a generation opportunity to grow jobs and increase wages for Montana farmers, ranchers, small business owners, and working families. Montana Democratic Senator John Tester also responded to the Senate passing the tax cut bill. He said, quote, the U.S. Senate just passed a hastily written bill that adds $1.5 trillion to the debt. Washington dysfunction has hit a new low, and Montana families and small businesses deserve better. The Senate bill will sit, uh, will sit and need to be reconciled with the House version before it can go to the president's desk. A tweet that appeared to be from President Trump caused a huge controversy, but now it appears the president didn't write the message himself. Laura Podesta is in the New York where the president spent the day fundraising with the latest. Not long after President Trump finished his remarks at a New York City event, a controversial tweet went out about his former national security advisor, Michael Flynn. Flynn pleaded guilty Friday to lying to federal agents about his contact with the then Russian ambassador to the U.S. Mr. Trump tweeted, I had to fire General Flynn because he lied to the vice president and the FBI. He has pled guilty to those lies. There was nothing to hide. 
The tweet suggested he knew Flynn had been dishonest back in February when the president asked then-FBI director James Comey to shut down the investigation into Flynn. The tweet caused a firestorm on the social media site. Democrat Congressman Adam Schiff wrote, If that is true, Mr. President, why did you wait so long to fire Flynn? And why did you pressure Director Comey to let this go? But sources tell CBS News the president did not write the tweet. Instead, it was Trump's lawyer, John Dowd, who composed the message. And what he meant to say was Flynn was fired for lying to Pence and other White House officials. And now we know he lied to the FBI. What has been shown is no collusion, no collusion. Speaking to reporters for the first time since Flynn's guilty plea, President Trump did not appear concerned that Flynn is now cooperating with special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian meddling during the election and possible collusion with the Trump campaign. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Sources tell CBS News they acknowledge Mr. Trump's tweet was unhelpful, raising questions about what the president knew and when. Now back in Missoula with the holidays just around the corner, many Missoulians are getting into the Christmas spirit. The streets of downtown were filled with people taking advantage of all the events going on. MTN's Dona Lakatua reports. Red and green came out in full force as the annual holiday celebrations in downtown Missoula kicked off earlier today. Wreaths and Christmas trees adorned local businesses and many hosted events that welcomed children of all ages. One organization in particular was certainly feeling the spirit of giving. The Independent Order of Oddfellows took to the sidewalk to give out free beverages and snacks to passerby. The Grand Secretary said they want to give back to the community so that people can see all the work they do for local charities. Our mission statement is to uh, work with others to help the uh, underprivileged, to work with Special Olympics. I think we should donate because uh, we can just give more to the community, we can help. Just down the street, the Grizzly Dip was well underway, where Special Olympians and law enforcement raised money and awareness for the Special Olympics. One Olympian in particular was excited and thankful. It, it, I feel very honored to you, I feel very happy. Just all the cops that I have known here in Montana are very good to me. And they showed me the way to go, be positive, be a positive role to uh, kids. And last but definitely not least, Santa touched down outside the Florence building and made his way inside with an accompanying band of young guitarists. As kids took photos with Old St. Nick, dozens of musicians in the Child Bloom guitar program played holiday hymns that echoed through the central chamber. Reporting in Missoula, Donal Lakatua for MTN News. And later this evening, the Downtown Missoula Association put on the annual Parade of Lights, and afterwards crowds gathered to help Santa count down the seconds until the lights turned on at the tree lighting ceremony. Three, two, one. Merry Christmas! The 15th annual parade started at the beginning on Higgins Avenue and ended at the red X's where the tree lighted lighting was held. Family and friends gathered for the annual event, many having spent the entire afternoon taking part in the Christmas activities. And KPAX is proud to partner with the First Security Bank and Glacier Banks for our annual holiday food drive. Just drop off your non-perishable food donations at any First Security Bank location in Missoula or Glacier Bank in Northwest Montana. All your food donations stay right here in Western Montana. In Great Falls, about 800 airmen assigned to the 120th Air Wing gathered today to celebrate Wingman Day. Wingman Day is a United States Air Force event that promotes a culture of caring and aims to strengthen the bond between all airmen. Today's topic, resiliency, with guest speaker John Parker, who will focus on emotional, physical, social, and spiritual aspects that will strengthen performance and resilience. Colonel Beale Dixon says it's important for the airmen to bond and for the Air Force to be a close-knit community. Well, this is about airmen today. It's, it's about connecting with our airmen. It's about having our airmen connect amongst each other. Uh, teaching them about uh, resiliency, teaching them about uh, how to talk to people uh, and, and understand other people's problems. It's to bring us together as a group, to bring us together as small groups and a big group to let everybody know we're one team, one fight. I can't say enough about the airmen and how they are, are willing and volunteer and they keep pushing forward to help out and uh, do the mission. So uh, my hat's off to them. 
Coming up after the break, northwest Montana towns can expect some light snow accumulation overnight. Meteorologist Russ Thomas will be in with weather. Plus, the biblical town of Bethlehem is kicking off their holiday season. We'll have this story next. 